Alright guys, welcome back. We're going to be solving another question from the second chapter of the Mechanics of Materials by Bjorn Johnson. And for this steel truss, we have the elastic modulus of 29 times 10 to the 6 PSI and the loading that we can see. We need to determine the deformations of members BD and DE. So BD and DE. Knowing that the cross-sectional area is 2 inches squared and three inches square respectively so for each of these two and we solved a similar question in the previous video uh what we need in here is to find the force in each of these two members and our deformation would be pretty easy we're gonna have this formula of force times length over the area times elastic modulus so but since we are dealing with the truss and we are asked to find specific members or the force in the specific members we can use the method of sections and i'm going to use two different sections for each of these two our first section would be this one so i'm just going to draw the free body diagram for that part and we're going to have the member abc 30 kips here i'm going to have 30 kips at point b so a b c and if we do that section we're, we're going to be dealing with uh, forces in member FBD, which is the one that we're looking for, force in member FEE, and also one force in here, FCE. And these two are going to cross each other as point A. E. So the easiest way in here to get rid of the force in FCE and an FBE would be Bjorn equilibrium. We have three different equations sum of all forces in x equals zero, sum of all forces in y equals zero, and we're going to have one moment equation. These are our equilibrium equations, just call x and y in here. And it seems for this free body diagram, if we just do the moment about point E, since the line of action of FCE and FBE is going to pass through point E, we won't have any moment from these two forces. So we're going to have the moment of FBD, which as we can see, it's a counterclockwise moment. So positive FBD times the distance. And our distance would be vertical distance from E to the line of action, which is this distance or basically distance from B to C, which is 15 feet. And we're going to have the moment of the 30 kips that is applying at point B. This is going to be clockwise. So negative 30 times, uh, same thing, vertical distance from E to the line of action of the 30, or this distance here, which is eight. And also we're gonna have another 30 kips at point A. This one's also clockwise moment, so negative again. And vertical distance to the line of action. This is the line of action. So now we're looking for this distance, which is eight plus eight or 16. This will be equal to zero and we should be able to find FBD in here. So we can factor 30 in here. So 16 plus 8 over 15. This will be 2. This is going to be 24. And that's going to give us 48 kips for the force in member, in member BD. We did not get any negative sign. That shows the direction is actually correct meaning that the member bd which is somewhere in here is in tension so we're going to be expecting a positive elongation for this member and again we have the formula that i discussed i'm just going to find the forces first and finding the deformation is pretty easy so that was the forcing member bd we have to figure out the forcing member de as well i'm just going to clean up the figure so for member DE, we're going to use a different section. And the section that we're going to do be this section. We're going to consider the top part. So it would be the free body diagram of ABCE. So for ABCE, we're going to have something like this. All right, so that's good enough. So we're going to have, again, the 30 kips in here, 30 kips at A. 30 at point B. Uh, we're going to have one force in here, which was our FBD. And here, this is our point C. This is E. And we're going to have two forces in here. One in here. If it's going to be EG, and this one is going to be FE. So the one that we are interested in, and these two are going to cross each other at point D. The one that we're interested in here is FED. 
Again, we have those three equilibrium equations, but if we look at this, we'll see that the easiest equation in here would be sum of all forces in x equals zero, because that way we're gonna have FED uh, to the left, so negative, and we're gonna have 230 kips to the right, so plus 30, plus 30, and that shows that our FED in here is actually 60 kips, and again, we didn't get any negative sign that shows that that's a correct direction. So remember, ED is in here. Based on Newton's law, we're going to have a force in opposite direction. So this one's also in tension. And when the member is in tension, that means we're going to have a positive elongation because it will be elongated. So the rest of this is pretty easy. You just have to put the numbers for each of them to find the deformation. So let's start with F, uh, the member BD. So the force we figure is 48 kips. And since we have the elastic modulus in PSI would be pound per inch squared. So we're going to multiply kips by 1000 or get it in pound. The length of member BD. BE would be 8 feet. Again, we need another unit conversion. Um, 1 foot is 12 inches, so we're going to multiply this by 12 in order to get it an inch. And the question told us that the BD has 2 inches squared cross-sectional area, so 2 inches squared, and the elastic modulus 29 times 10 to the 6. Yes, I and this should give us the final answer for this part. So let's see what we get. So 48 times 1000 times 8 times 12 divided by 2 times 29 times 10 to the 6. And this will be uh, basically 79.5 times 10 to the minus 3 inches. That's the answer for member BD and for ED. Going to be 60 times 10 to the 3 again. Uh, let's see what's the length of ED. Length of ED is 15. So again, 15 feet. We're going to multiply it by 12 to get it in inch. And the area, I think it was 3. Yeah, so the area of DE is 3. So here we're going to have. 3 inches squared times 29 times 10 to the 6. Let's see what we get. 60. This will be 15. And this will be 3. And this is going to give us 12.4 times 10 to the minus 3 inches. And the deformation for member ED. Hope everything was clear. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Uh, by the way, I have a separate channel that I go through all these injury mechanic questions, the method of sections that be used in here, I explain in that channel why we are sectioning like this. So basically we are trying to section the member that we are trying to figure out. So our section has to cross the member that we are trying to figure out. And here it was easier to do two different sections. That's why I have two different free by diagrams. And I didn't use the method of joints because it would be long and we don't need to go through each joints to find the force in each member. And yeah, hope everything was clear. See you guys in the next video. Have a good one.